Welcome to the Ink Pole Podcast. I'm still sipping this espresso. I'm just knocking out these intros right now. Boom, 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 one after the other. Getting my podcast set. I'm scheduled way in advance, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy about everything we're doing here. This is probably the last Stack Machine installment for a while. I hope you've enjoyed this. There's been a lot of storytelling going on. This is a dream project of mine. I'm super excited about. The music is incredible. The art is incredible. I'm making friends and working with creatives that I that inspire me, that I look up to, that have been a big part of my life for so long, and now I'm working with them. Dreams come true. Manifest that shit. Make it happen. So enjoy this. Today we're inking the uh, headshot for Booty Brown for his design, and uh, we got some mad merch coming. Maybe it's out by now, and if it is, check the link in the comments. If not, it'll be soon. Check all social media. Check the Stack Machine. Check Booty Brown. Check Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Check DJ Mike Realm and Ink Pulp, always. That's it, people. See you next week. Peace. Welcome to the Ink Pulp Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal. Uh, I feel the need to say that every time we, we have a show. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it's just the right thing to do. It seems a little funny to say it so much, but you never know when someone's new tuning in. So uh, today, on, on, well, on this episode, we should talk about, well, what I'm doing is inking the head of the character for Booty Brown of the Far Side, one of the original and creators of the Stack Machine. I want to take a moment, because I've mentioned so many people involved, to talk about um, my art partner on this, Juan Do. I, I haven't spoken to him enough, and I realize that, and that that's not healthy or good, because I'll call him J.D., uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's also an artist whose work blows my mind. And we have a mutual love and respect for each other's work. And creatively, we work very well together. And JD is very much a part of the visual aspect of the stack machine um, a as we move forward. Um, he's been involved since the beginning. Uh there are elements of graphic design to the stack machine that uh, are, are completely his. I, I mean, I knew when I got called into this, uh, I had a vision for what we were going to do and, and what this was. And I knew like we needed uh, a graphic designer in here that could bring a unique voice that, that is grounded in, in hip hop and comics and, that there's none better than than JD but on top of that he brings the the skills of, of an incredible and inspiring illustrator and comic book artist to the table as well um, so together we we make a dynamic duo but he, he is an essential part of the stack machine and, and I wanted to take a moment to make sure that was known I haven't spoken to that enough uh, so, yeah, there's two of us on, on the visual side of this stack machine madness. Um, here, the, the, I want to talk about the challenge of this design with Brown. The challenge for Brown, for me, was, was the hair. Um, it's getting, and you'll see it at the end when, when we get closer to the end, it's getting the, the hair to not read as a solid black shape with these little thing like little tendrils coming off of it like I don't want you to see the outline of the shape I want the hair to blend from black into the tendrils very naturally 
which was a little tricky, um, but we, we nailed it. I mean, I, I definitely nailed in the end here, but at the very end, I was like, oh, shit, I can see that shape. I need to get rid of it. So that's the big challenge. And also the challenge is, is finding a language for describing the hair. I really wanted the brushwork to be loose in there and, and uh, scribbly because, uh, A, I can do that with a brush, and it's, it's a rare thing you see people do these days. And uh, my skill set is, is good enough that I can do that. And uh, it creates a really unique look. The, I mean, just you can see it now in, in the little tendrils of hair the way the brush just is scribbly and I think it's such a cool and unique look and it really needed to be used in in this project I mean when I saw like when I was using when I designed the character and I was using some photos of brown I found online as reference uh, I knew we were covering his face with a mask and I was like well it's gonna be signature brown if I get the hair right and uh, and in the end I, I think we definitely did um, the mask itself is super dope. Uh, I'm really proud of and happy with the final result on that and um, the reflective material of the sunglasses too. So where we are now with Stack Machine, um, these, are, these podcasts are coming out in July. I'm recording ahead of time so I can stay on schedule. Um, but we, we have plans. I'm really hoping that well, the plan is these podcasts I'm recording are part of the tease, are part of the get ready for the stack machine because in the coming weeks, it's coming out. That's the plan as of now. So I, I hope, you know, maybe even when this episode comes out, we already have the stack machine out and it's, it's, uh, it, it's available. So, like I said, and, and one of the challenges we've had is, you know, we want to grow this with a bunch of rappers. We want to keep designing and creating new characters. Uh, I mean, Brown always said that we are creating the Justice League of hip hop. And I think he, he was using that metaphorically, not so directly. I mean, we're not creating the Justice League. I, I mean, I myself have very little love for the Justice League. <laughs> I'll say we're creating the X-Men <laughs> or the Avengers of Con even growing up I, I I didn't have love for the Avengers um, it was honestly the movies and, and seeing what they were capable of I was never a big team hero guy I liked the X-Men and I think they were always more popular with the hip-hop world anyway um, they were the outsiders the outliers the the the, the misfits and I think anybody in the creative field, especially in hip hop and comics, can relate to that because those two art forms were kind of the misfits for a long time, the outcasts, the outliers. But also the, um, the idea that the mutant is a metaphor for racism in, in society is, is, is one I really enjoyed as a child growing up. As a Jewish kid, I, I had experienced some... some uh, anti-semitic hate through my life so it was cool to see these x-men fighting for something good and i think that's i've always been one of those people who never uh, was a bit naive I, I never realized racism was as big of a problem as it was because i i didn't think that way and you know as a child who, who does but you know i grew up i'm really really blessed to have had the childhood I had. I grew up in Columbia, Maryland, which was an experiment, um, a social experiment. And if you watch the movie, um, I think it's called Brooklyn Rising. I might be wrong about that, but it's Ed Norton is in it. And it's, uh, it's about, so Ed Norton's from my hometown, Columbia, Maryland, and he's around my age. So a lot of people I knew knew him as this nerdy theater kid. Um, I didn't know him, but uh, he came from he his uncle. Last name was Rouse, and in Columbia, the the Rouse Company um, they built it. They built the city. They planned it and built it. So that movie, Brooklyn Rising, they're talking about this planned community in Maryland. And that's Columbia. And that's where I grew up. So we moved there when it was a lot of farmland and development. 
And as I lived there, it grew and grew and grew. And, and what this community was planned to be was um, a diversified ethnic and racial mix of people living in close quarters to each other and, and all different socioeconomic levels. So part of Columbia is very expensive and part of it was, was not. Uh, so I grew up around and my early childhood friend crew was extremely diverse and that's what I grew up around and even amongst that diversity um, like I remember like I had so my crew was me Brian who's white Roman Catholic uh, Charles was Korean immigrant well he was born here his parents are immigrants his grandmother lived with him from Korea spoke no English um, uh, oh, Ramon, Latin, uh, Mexican, Latin American, uh, was another one, another friend. And, um, Kevin was our, was, uh, our black friend. And, it, and I was the Jewish kid and it wasn't like it was mainly a crew of white kids. And there was a couple, it, we were that mixed and, and it was, um, I'm thankful for that experience growing up. Uh, I learned so much about different cultures just from all my friends. So I don't have it in me. So I'm a bit naive that way. But um, yeah, I guess that'll be the last Stack Machine podcast for a little while. Um, we'll have future designs, but this is this is all promoting the song that's coming out now, soon, or already has. So peep that shit. And I'll see you next week. Peace. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. 